Hello, everyone. My name is Xingxing Tan, and thank you for tuning in to my doctoral general exam presentation here. On October the fourth, twenty twenty one, I took my general exam, showcased my work to my doctoral committee, earned their recognition, and was admitted into PhD candidacy afterwards. Now, with this series of two videos, I'm glad to share with you what I have learned and achieved with our spectacular team in the past four years of my PhD study. Let's jump right in. Firstly, a brief introduction. The ultracold gases are a very rich platform to study quantum phenomena such as interaction-driven quantum dynamics. Our dear lab, located in the basement of the Physics Astronomy Building on the Seattle campus of University of Washington, conducts our research using ultracold lithium and ytterbium quantum gases. The technologies we use in our lab include ultra-high vacuum, high-power lasers of different wavelengths, magnetic coils, radio frequency electronics, acoustic optics, and so on. On the left, you can see a brief overview of our dual species apparatus, where ytterbium vapor and lithium vapor are slowed down by Zeeman slowers and then loaded into the magneto optical trap inside our ultra-high vacuum chamber. Several magnetic coils are also wrapped around the ultra-high vacuum chamber to provide the magnetic field and gradient necessary for our experiments. You can also see a picture of our red and green lasers in action, as well as a series of pictures showing our dual species mod, green for ytterbium and red for lithium. At the bottom, you can see an absorption image of ytterbium Bose-Einstein condensate, which is captured by our Andor CCD camera and processed by our data analysis software Igor. For more details about our lab setup, please check out my lab tour videos linked in the description below. My presentation in this series of two videos includes three sections, as shown in the outline here. The first section is about the magnetic Fischbach resonance. I'll start with the motivation and basic concepts of MFR. The magnetic Fischbach resonance between ytterbium and lithium can be used to form ultra-cold doublet ground state molecules or to simulate quantum phenomena like superfluidity in mass-imbalanced mixtures. Why are we interested in ytterbium-lithium molecules? As you can see from the sketch on the bottom right, the ytterbium atom in this molecule, having a closed-shell electronic structure, has no unpaired electron. But the lithium atom in the molecule contributes one unpaired electron, resulting in a molecule with a single unpaired electron in its ground state, which makes it the equivalence of an alkali atom in the molecule world. This unpaired electron also leads to the ground state molecule having a magnetic moment of one Bohr magneton, which allows for the magnetic trapping of this molecule. Due to the heteronuclear configuration of the molecule, it has a natural electric dipole moment as well. Along with the magnetic moment, these two degrees of controls open up a vast array of opportunities for research. For more details, please refer to the recent thesis from our lab, authored by Dr. Alena Green. Now let's move on to the basics of Feshbach resonance. On the left is a sketch of the two-channel model for Feshbach resonance. The vertical axis is the potential energy for each channel, in the shape of Leonard Jones potential, and the horizontal axis is the separation between the two atoms in question. When these two channels correspond to atoms in two different states, they will have different potential energies. If there is a coupling term in the Hamiltonian, and when the two atoms colliding at energy E in the entrance channel have the same energy as a molecular bound state with energy EC in the closed channel, the Feshbach resonance will happen and the two free atoms will bound to form a Feshbach molecule. The magnetic Feshbach resonance is a special case of Feshbach resonance. The energy separation between the two channels comes from the Zeeman shift caused by the external homogeneous magnetic field. When the atoms in the two channels are in two different spin states, there is a non-zero magnetic moment difference between the two channels. Therefore, tuning the magnetic field B moves the energy of the two channels by different amounts. 
This allows us to reach the resonant coupling that I mentioned in the previous slide and approach magnetic Feshbach resonance. The general behavior of the two-atom system is predictable near the magnetic Feshbach resonance. The S-wave scattering length can be described by the formula on the top right, and it diverges right at the resonance. For positive scattering length, the atoms are bound in a molecular state, with a binding energy quadratic to the magnetic field when it's very close to the resonance, but linear to the magnetic field when it's far away from the resonance. In this next part, I will make a comparison between the bialkali magnetic Feshbach resonance and the novel resonance we have discovered between the closed shell ytterbium and the open shell lithium. The earliest successes of magnetic Feshbach resonance molecule formation were achieved in bialkali systems, which realized a high phase space density gas of molecules. The coupling terms in the Hamiltonian for bialkali MFR are simply the hyperfine couplings within each participant alkali atom, that is, the nuclear spin to electronic spin coupling for each individual atom. These terms are non-diagonal in the total spin basis of the two-atom system, and that mechanism strongly couples the singlet and triplet channels during atomic collisions. However, in the open-shell 6-lithium and closed-shell 1-m3 ytterbium system, no such strong coupling exists. Instead, as we have found out, there is a weak and separation-dependent coupling between the nuclear spin of 1,7,3 ytterbium and the electronic spin of 6-lithium that couples the two doublet channels. Here is a slide with more details about the ytterbium-lithium MFR. The solid blue lines are the free atomic state energies versus magnetic field, measured in Gauss, 1 Gauss equals 0.1 millitesla. And the dashed red lines are the molecular state energies versus magnetic field. In the large scales shown in figure A, we can see a set of level crossings between the free atomic state with ms of lithium at minus one half and the molecular state with ms of lithium at plus one half. These level crossings correspond to the MFR that I mentioned before, and during the molecule formation, the electronic spin of lithium is raised by one. Now, if we zoom in on the crossing region, we'll get figure B. Since the weak coupling term responsible for the MFR is only between the nuclear spin I of ytterbium and the electronic spin S of lithium, the Mi of lithium stays the same during the molecule formation. Therefore, in the scales of figure B, we can label these three resonances by the Mi of lithium. Looking at the lithium spin state in the free atomic channel, the red triangle corresponds to the state 1 of lithium with ms equals minus 1 half and mi equals plus 1. The purple triangle corresponds to the state 2 with ms equals minus 1 half and mi equals 0. And the blue triangle corresponds to the state 3 with ms equals minus 1 half and mi equals minus 1. Now, what would happen if we zoom in even more? If we look at the purple triangle in the middle of figure B and zoom in around this resonance to the scales in figure C, we can see that this resonance with lithium in state 2 splits into five resonances. This splitting is so tiny that we can't even see them in the prior scales. The five resonances in figure C are labeled by the Mi of ytterbium. During the molecule formation, due to the conservation of angular momentum, the sum of Mi of ytterbium and Ms of lithium remains the same. As mentioned before, the Ms of lithium increases by 1 during molecule formation, so the Mi of ytterbium has to decrease by 1. If we look at the solid blue line in figure C, where Mi of ytterbium is minus 5 halves in the free atomic state, because the nuclear spin of 173 ytterbium is I equals 5 halves, there is no lower Mi state for ytterbium to decrease to, therefore no resonance exists for this blue line, as we shall see in a few slides. Before digging into our experimental data, I want to briefly explain our experimental sequence. 
For the Ytterbium lithium MFR experiment, we load ultra-cold 173 ytterbium and 6 lithium into our optical dipole trap, spin polarize 6 lithium to state 2 with ms equals minus 1 half and mi equals 0, spin polarize 173 ytterbium to the desired mi state, perform a radial frequency transfer of 6 lithium to desired nuclear spin state, perform a linear ramp to desired external homogeneous magnetic field, Hold ytterbium and lithium atoms together for several seconds for interactions, and finally perform absorption imaging on the remaining six lithium atoms. This whole sequence is repeated for different magnetic fields to observe the resonance as the last spectroscopy of six lithium atoms. Now let's move on to the experimental data. On this side is the data for the three resonances corresponding to the three spin states of lithium atoms. On the right is a recap of the calculated locations of these resonances from two slides ago, and on the left is the data we've taken. The red resonance has Mi of lithium equal to plus 1, the purple 0, and the blue minus 1. These resonances occur at different magnetic fields and are measured by the remaining lithium number after the interaction. Now, as I mentioned before, if we zoom in on the purple resonance, we'll be able to resolve even finer details as shown in this slide here. Here, in the free atomic channel, the lithium atoms are spin polarized to state 2 with ms equals minus 1 half and mi equals 0. As a recap, again, when we have a much finer control over the magnetic fields, we can resolve five different resonances corresponding to different mi's of ytterbium, as shown on the right here. And indeed, we have observed the same in our data on the left here. The widths of these resonances are quite narrow, about 100 milligauss. And, as per our calculations, detailed in the recent doctoral thesis from our group, the atom-molecule coupling term turns out to be about 1 milligauss times delta mu, where delta mu is the difference in magnetic moments between the two channels. Therefore, a coherent molecule formation is going to require an even more stable magnetic field than what we have here. And that leads to my final section of this part, which is our efforts for ultra-cold molecule formation. So in our MFR paper, the magnetic field stability is estimated to be about 40 milligauss for a high field of 640 gauss. But for a coherent molecule formation, we need to stabilize the current in the Helmholtz coil for MFR and suppress the AC noise in the large DC current to about a few parts per million. Our solution is an active noise cancellation regime, as I sketched out on the left here. After successfully setting up this feedback circuit, a noise analysis in the frequency domain shows about 20 decibels of noise suppression by the feedback, which corroborates with the root mean square analysis and confirms that the new system has a stability of about a few milligauss. The stabilization of the magnetic field is one crucial part for coherent molecule formation, but there is yet one more thing to help our cause. For the other piece of the puzzle and more exciting studies on interaction-driven quantum dynamics, please check out the second part of my general exam presentation, and the video link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.